Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Gerser, and I'm here before this congressional hearing to discuss the topic of childhood obesity. I really focus on this topic because as a registered nurse, I see the negative health effects adults experience as a result of unhealthy childhood practices. Um, as healthcare moves towards the direction of primary care, children need to be provided with the resources to make healthy decisions early in life to prevent obesity and potential complications of chronic conditions. Not all, but many children that are obese will eventually become obese adults and at a higher risk for other comorbidities such as heart disease and diabetes that increases the need for secondary health care. If we start by looking at the national scorecard, childhood obesity is one of the indicators that falls under healthy lives. And as you can see, this measurement was relatively high in 2006 at 75%, then showed a slight decline in 2008 at 72%. This raises concern about healthy behaviors that can affect Americans' health and quality of life. Childhood and adolescent obesity is a major health concern affecting 32% of our children ages 10 to 17 in the United States. Childhood obesity is Childhood and adolescent obesity is a major health concern affecting 32% of children ages 10 to 17 in the United States. Um, child obesity is measured according to the body, body mass index or the BMI scale. Um, a result of 25 to 29 is considered overweight, 30 to 39 is obese, and greater than 40 is considered extremely obese. The BMI scales for these charts were gathered and reported by schools, and as you can see, there is evidence of an increase in the percentage of children with obesity. In 2007, there were only six states that reported an obesity rate of 15 to 19 percent, compared to 2015, where there are now 12. If we look at this interactive map that's produced by the Commonwealth Fund, we can see how various states rank in childhood obesity. Um, starting in the Northeast, obesity rates are lower, therefore states have a higher ranking than those heading down towards the South. The same goes for the Northwest as well. Since children spend a minimum of six hours a day at school, many of our national programs are school-based. Um, the majority of our calories consumed are from school-prepared meals. Therefore, nutrition programs work to incorporate fresh fruits and vegetables that are locally grown. Um, schools provide both breakfast and lunch, as well as after-school snacks. And many schools have installed um, water stations to promote uh, intake of water rather than purchasing sugary drinks. Another component to obesity is physical activity. Therefore, structured physical education classes provide physical activity that's necessary to maintain a healthy weight. There are also education opportunities for both students and parents, such as MyPlate. Despite many of the funded programs for our um, children to prevent obesity, there are many social and personal barriers to success. Therefore, it's dependent on the individual and their parents to employ successful lifestyle modifications to prevent childhood obesity. Um, this includes reducing the intake of sugary foods and drinks, limiting screen time, providing fiscal report, excuse me, fiscal resources to purchase healthy foods, and community education. Um, this afternoon, I've talked about a lot of school-based programs, but support in school is not where this should end. Um, we should be utilizing and funding programs such as the WSCC, which reaches out beyond school, investing more in our communities and community involvement and family engagement, um, which are necessary factors to success and will promote positive program outcomes. After this brief um, presentation of information, um, my request to decrease the incidence of childhood obesity are to increase regulatory efforts on food production companies to limit the amount of added sugar to prepared foods continue funding school and community-based pro community programs, and increase the number of school-based health programs that can provide early intervention in education. To conclude this presentation, I have included a list of my references.